Hello and thank you for joining me, Astrologer Patrick Arundel, for your in-depth monthly horoscope for December. Now, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please also check out my Year 2021 Special Offer Personal Horoscope Package. You can get the whole of Year 21 and also uh, the rest of Year 2020 if you order this year. Plus, you can get your character analysis, all based on your time, date and place of birth. This is going to give you searing insights. No two reports are the same. It's totally based on you, the individual. So please check that out beneath this video and there is 30% off at this time. Hello Scorpio and welcome to your December forecast. So as we come into the last month of the year, Venus, the planet of love and passion, is in your sign for the first two weeks. Because of social distancing, restrictions on the ability to connect, get together in more friendly ways, which would normally happen at this time of year, it could be that that can blunt some of the benefits of Venus being in this area in terms of actually meeting up with people. But your aura of attractiveness is going to be very high and that can pull good things to you. Now, as we begin this month, the sun is in the sector of your situation to do with resources. It's joined on the first day by Mercury, the planet of communication. So this combination of the two of them together in the sign of Sagittarius can give you the desire to try to push back if there has been any impact on your financial situation this year, but in a very constructive way. In fact, the sun's going to be engaging with your traditional ruling planet of Mars in the second week of this month. Now, the sun is very much about our soul energy. It's about our divinity, where we really can get in touch with our core characteristics. So here it's asking you to be strong about your sense of self-worth. But because it links in such a positive way with your ruler, it's a very dynamic angle. The second six houses can see you being very practical, but very busy. So even though we are coming up to Christmas and that might be occupying some of your energies, I do feel that you're going to be pretty focused on how you can gain uh, or make progress in a more worldly and constructive way. Of course, Uranus, the planet of of uh, freedom continues in its retrograde in your seventh house and the seventh house is about relationships so there can be some movement in that area a need for greater independence or a need for a connection but with venus in your sign i think what we're talking about here is that your magnetism can be high so even if you are involved with someone uh, you can still attract good energy and attention which of course is lovely. Now on the 14th we have a really really important solar eclipse. This solar eclipse is the first in a season of Gemini and Sagittarius eclipses. Uh, we had a lunar eclipse in Gemini at the end of last month which provides energy as you come into this month which may see you thinking very much about your closest most intimate connections and also your longer term resources. But this one is really giving you the opportunity to springboard into the new year in a very dynamic way around your sense of self and also around money. So, for example, if you are a creative person and, and you have a talent, but you've always worked in a bigger organisation, you may find that over the Christmas holidays, you are talking to someone about how you might be able to manifest your creativity in a new way. This is because on Christmas Day itself, Mercury is going to be forging a beautiful link with Uranus, but Mercury by then, it moves on the 21st along with the Sun, into an area which is about your thinking. So the last 10 days of this month can see you very actively thinking about how you can improve your lot. But the power of the solar eclipse is the last two weeks of this year and the first five and a half months of next year. So it's going to give you a lot of long-term drive which is really welcome. And then on the 15th, Venus moves out of your sign and into Sagittarius. So 
some good news can come to you around resources in the last half of this year. Now it is true that your two ruling planets, Mars your traditional ruler and Pluto your modern higher octave ruler, do come into conflict in the last two weeks of this year. Of course Mars has been going through a very extended journey through your sector of everyday responsibilities, obligations, stuff to do with work, health, um, organisation. And of course it was retrograde and it was in conflict with Jupiter to begin with, Saturn and now Pluto at the end of this year since the 27th of July. So it's been a tough old time with Mars. It, it inverted inside the big three in Capricorn. But as we come to the end of this year, it is clashing again with Pluto because Mars has started to go forwards or has been going forwards and they come back into uh, a 90 degree angle. And this is about power, but it's also about desire. So for you, it's about not trying too hard, I feel. You could try to be so productive at the end of this year that you're kind of almost like burning the candle at both ends, being maybe a little bit agitated by things, finding yourself getting a little stressed. So try to avoid that because on the 17th, followed by the 19th, first Saturn, then Jupiter move into your sector of home and emotion. Saturn's going to be there for the next two and a quarter years. You had a brief visit from the 22nd of March to the 2nd of, of August. But together, uh, on the 21st, on the winter solstice, this is the first time they've been together exactly since 1405. So it's incredibly rare. And for you, I feel the background message, along with that potential to be more productive around resources and perhaps earn more, could come from some kind of home-based enterprise or it could be someone in your family that you can collaborate with or if you do work for a bigger employer obviously a lot of people are home working but I feel that there may be changes that come in your role but in a positive way that you might actually enjoy if you're somebody who's more sociable and you're finding home working a bit stifling and limiting then you might start to think about finding another role where you can feel more at ease within yourself and if belonging to somewhere where you actually physically go to work is really much more to your liking then that wouldn't be a surprise if you're thinking to do that but on the 21st the sun and mercury also move into the sign of capricorn as uh, the sun always does at this time of the year but your thinking is going to be very lively and vibrant now there is a full moon on the last day of december in the sign of cancer so we're back into that third ninth house axis which has been so powerful in the last few years and the cancer energy is asking you to think about broadening your horizons whereas the capricorn energy is asking you to be very responsible in the here and now i think the energy of this is going to last for the first two weeks of january but essentially as you come to the end of this year the electricity that's being created by uranus in a very positive way with the angle to Mercury on Christmas Day, it then occurs with the Sun, suggests that your thinking, particularly around work, could then uh, align you with someone who's got an ability to work with technology, spot trends, someone who's a bit more of a three spirit. And even if you're someone who has worked in quite a traditional way in the past, thinking outside the box about how you can use these changes that have gone on to society but in a more flexible way to free yourself from perhaps a role that you may have once really enjoyed. It may actually be quite well paid, but stimulation is definitely going to be very important as you come to the end of this year, but also a sense that you need to do things that feed your sense of self-worth and also feed your bank balance. I'd like to wish you a very happy Christmas. Stay safe, good luck, take care, and goodbye. Thank you.